Howdy everyone, my name is Avram Plager, and welcome back to my Technica tutorials. So before I begin, I do want to thank all of my subscribers and everybody who's been watching my videos so far. It really does mean a lot to know that I'm teaching people. Um, that said, I do have a goal to reach 70 subscribers by the end of next week. So please share this channel with your friends and family so we can reach that goal. Alright, so today we're going to be looking at another feature in Tinkercad, which is how to separate objects into parts, so you can print two parts of an object and put them together to create that object again. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a new design. And once we go into our design, we'll make a large object. There's a preset design that I'll use. So you go to this box here, and you'll scroll all the way down to the Smithsonian. Now you'll scroll all the way down to the Smithsonian, and choose the Washington bust. We're using this because it's the best example of what I'm, of what I'm gonna show. Um, but you can use any object you want here. So you can see we have the base here and a large midsection here. So we can see that we need to cut it roughly about where my mouse is crossing here, right where the midpoint of that buckle is. So we're gonna go back to our basic shapes and we're gonna pull out two whole boxes. Now we're gonna center these by selecting both and going to our line tab centering them both on the middle and the other middle. Now switching to our orthographic view and switching to the top, we'll take our box and we'll scale it up until it's just a few millimeters outside of our bust. So just about there. Again, this doesn't need to be perfectly exact, but just to give you a little bit of clearance. Now what we'll do is we'll switch to our front view, and we'll change the height of this object until it's about the midpoint of the buckle. When you're separating objects into parts, you do want to make sure that you're separating it at the largest length and width, so that you have enough room to work with. So now that we have our bottom box set up, press Control D on our keyboard to duplicate that, and we'll shift this up until it's sitting flush with the top of our bottom box. We need to check that it is sitting flush, and the way that we do that is we click on our bottom box and we check the height. We can see that that's 32 millimeters, so we'll change the Z height of this. This tab is hiding that, so we'll close that tab. We'll change the Z height of this until this is 32 millimeters off of our base. You can see this arrow represents the Z height. And this arrow represents the height. So we can see that our top box is a little bit short, so we'll change the height. Now we have two boxes set up, each with enough clearance to make their changes. So now what we need to do is we need to hide our top box, pressing Control H on our keyboard. We'll switch back to perspective view for a little bit, and we'll make a duplicate of our bust by, press, by clicking our our bust and we'll click Control D on our keyboard to duplicate that. Now we'll take our bottom box and our bust and click Control G on our keyboard to, to join them together and that will subtract the hole from our bust. You can see the red outline shows that you're subtracting it and once that red outline goes away and the box disappears we can move on. So now you can see the base of where our bust is or at least the duplicate of it, is raised up to the midpoint of that buckle where our box made a cut. Now we'll press Control shift h to show everything. We'll select our top box and the other portion of our bust. We'll press Control g again on our keyboard to join those together. And again, once that disappears, we know our, we know our change has been made. Now you can see there's a line separating the two sides of the bust. We can move the top side, and you can see we have a bottom side that is flat, clean across, and the top side is flat, clean across as well. We'll press Control Z to keep those together, because if you make any changes with the pins, 
that we're going to put in in just a second. And these are shifted apart. When you go to put it together, this will be shifted apart as well. So keep these in their orientation once you separate them, do not move them. Now what we'll do is we'll draw a cylinder. I'll make this a three millimeter by three millimeter cylinder. So click on the two dialogues and change them each to three millimeters by clicking the three on your numpad. Now we'll change the height of this to be about 13 millimeters. We'll go back to our orthographic view and switch to our front view. Again, if you click on a face in orthographic view, it switches you directly to that face. Now we'll shift this up and we'll use the arrow keys on our keyboard to move it. You can use the left key and the right key to move it for now since we're only in the front view. So now we can see this is roughly midway on our shape. So we'll shift this until it's about inwards. And our snap grid you can see is set to one millimeter. We want this to be set to 0.5 millimeters so we can make more precise changes. This means that when we press a numpad on our keypad, it smooths it 0.5 millimeters in either direction. So now that we have it inside of our shape like we want, we'll go to our right view. And you can use these arrow keys here to change your viewpoints. But before we move it completely inside, we do need to make our bust hollow. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use our box select with our left mouse button. And we're going to change this into a hole. You can see this allows you to see completely through your object, as well as see the interface layer between the bottom side of the bust and the top side of the bust. Now we'll switch back to our right view. We'll select our, our pin. And it's very important that you do not deselect your pin because otherwise you're not gonna be able to select it again. So you'll now shift this in until you can see there's an, you can see once it interfaces our hole of our bust, it turns a dark orange and when it's outside, it turns a light orange. So we need to do this until it's a dark orange all through. Now we'll shift around, we can see it's protruding a little bit in the back. So we'll shift this inwards by using again, the arrow keys on your keypad. You can see this is still a little bit outwards. And now it's completely inside. Tinkercad for the most part works mostly visually, so you can see most changes that you're making just looking at it. So now we have that where we need it. And we'll press Ctrl D to duplicate it. We need to set up five pins. That way our object is well sustained and has more than enough location points to fit on. We'll press Ctrl D again, and this one will move to the back. You can see we have an interface layer here where the bust protrudes. So move this there. And if it makes it easier, you can switch back into a perspective view for this, but I usually like to work in orthographic view since it doesn't portray any perspective. You can also see the outline of the base of this by looking at this blue square at the bottom. So you want that roughly centered. You'll press Ctrl D again. And Tinkercad does tend to take the location that you used. As you can see, this one located there. So the next time we duplicated it, it located at the same distance and the same orientation. This isn't a problem as we can just use the keys on our keypad to move it again to the point where we want. Again, you do want this to be, for the most part, symmetrical as you have over here to the left side. But again, our bust itself is not symmetrical, so you won't see perfect symmetry. But you do want two pins on the right, two pins on the left, and one on essentially the spine of the bust. So now I'll press Ctrl D again. And 
Now you can see we have all of our pins located, and they're all set where they need to be. So now what we'll do is we will hide the top portion of our bust by, by clicking the top portion of our bust and clicking Control H on our keyboard. Now we need to make the bottom of this a solid. And since we're using the pins both to make solid pins in the base and holes in the top, we need to use our box select to select only the pins and press Control D on our keypad to duplicate them. Don't move these pins because you're going to use them exactly as they are for the top portion. But just select all the pins by clicking with your left mouse button and then shift and using your left mouse button to click multiple. Now click the bottom portion of your bus as well and click control G to join those. You can see when you join any objects, there's a red outline. And once that red outline goes away, you can see our changes are made. So now we can press Control shift h to show the top portion of our bust again. We'll change this to a solid, and now we'll hide the bottom of our portion of our bust by, pressing, by clicking the bottom portion of our bust and pressing Control h on our keyboard. Now we'll change all of our pins into holes. Now using our box select, we can select all of this and press Control G to join those. And now once that's finished, we can press Control Shift H to show the bottom portion of our bust again. And now we can separate these. If it doesn't seem like these are connected because they're two different colors, this is because this is automatically set as a multicolor shape. If you don't want this to be multicolor, you can deselect this and change it to any color you want. I like to have different objects set as different, as mostly different colors. So you want to set these as different colors. Now with that done, you can see we have five pins in the base and five holes exactly replicating that in the top. Now if you're going to 3D print this, you have a flat bottom on both of your shapes and more than enough clearance to print these. I'll be posting more tutorials of functionalities in Tinkercad in the future, but as a general schedule, I'm orienting myself between Fusion 360, Blender, and Tinkercad. I'm attempting to post every single day about an 11 minute video on a specific feature. But again, if you do feel like you need a specific tutorial or you wanna learn a specific skill, feel free to either comment it down below or email it to me. I have my email in my bio and I will link it in the description. Always feel free to email me. I'm more than happy to accommodate any of my students. Thank you. Please remember to like and subscribe. It's very important to me to know that I'm teaching people. So please share this channel with your family and friends. Anybody you might anybody you know that might be interested in this content, please share this channel with them. Like and subscribe and have a great day.